Hi, thank you for checking out our channel. Here's going to be a repair video, hopefully, on a Parmac Solar Pack 12. This is a 12 volt model. They do make a smaller 6 volt unit as well. There's our information right there fencerfixer.com is our website. We also work on livestock and cattle livestock weigh scales, mostly on the Gallagher and True Test brand. We, uh, we do work on EID ear tag readers for livestock, mostly the Gallagher brand. We don't get a lot of that stuff in, but we do work on it. Uh, there are links down in the description below. If you like to click on our link, take it right to our website if you didn't catch that information before. All right. Oh, excuse me. Um, so the story on this, it didn't turn on. Um, the note says, won't power up. And I did try to just turn it on because it didn't come on at all. Um, so the first, this, this guy did send the whole entire unit along with the um, the battery. So we're gonna check the battery first because that'd be the easy thing that it might be, would be the batteries are bad. And I hate these things with the big heavy batteries. So many people are like, man, that's heavy duty. No, it's heavy because it's got a 10 pound battery pack in the thing. It's basically like two six volts sandwiched together in series to make it 12. Grab a hold of the dumb thing. Uh, battery is a 2021 battery, so that's the age of the battery. Let's um, check the battery first. I'm not just gonna. When you have a you know a solar unit and it doesn't come on at all, don't go out and just assume the battery's bad because these batteries aren't cheap. So test the battery. First, these are six volt. These this 12 volt battery pack is basically two six volt. They sandwich together there in the middle. And they put a jumper lead across there to tie them in series. So this is just two six volt batteries tied together. So that way it would physically fit in the case there. So I'm gonna unplug one side of the battery. Actually, on both sides. We're going to test it individually, and each battery should be 12 plus volt or 6 plus volts. Now that one reads 4.6. This one reads 4.1. So together it'd be about 8, 9 volts. So what I'm going to do first is we're going to take a power supply, and I'm going to set my power supply to 7 volts. And I'm going to hook it across this battery, you know, in each in battery individually, and see how much load it puts on my power supply. If it puts a pretty good load on it, 0.2 amp draw. So, two, so that battery's got a bad cell on it. So I'll do the same thing over here because it should have a lot higher draw than 0.2 amps. That one's 0.01 amps, so that's even less. So, this, so the battery's junk. So that's a problem. Now the reason why these batteries don't hold up very well, this thing's only three year old battery pack from today's time frame, um, it's 2024, is these solar panels and system on this particular unit, they do not have a voltage regulator on their system. This solar panel on all 12 volt systems, uh, the solar panel on its own puts out about 20 to 23 volts open circuit voltage or OCV. So, a lot of some brands like Gallagher and uh, there might be a few other ones in there, but Gallagher especially, they've got a different ways of doing it, but they have a voltage regulator on most of their solar stuff on most of the boards. Uh, all of them actually. But on the six volt and the twelve volt, and they got those lithium ones as well, they have a voltage regulator system built into the boards of different types. And it brings that say twenty three volts or whatever it is down to about fourteen give or take volts. On a 12 volt system, and on like on the 6 volt par max, those battery pack, or those solar panels puts out about 11 volts or so out of that thing. So you get 11 volts running into a 6 volt. You got 20 plus volts running into a 12 volt battery. It just cooks those things. It's overcharges them because it didn't have an automatic shut off on the um, solar panel. So when the batteries, when the battery gets to a certain level, it can't go any higher. So most brands they go into like a float mode. So the battery can't be overcharged, 
and then the panel kind of basically stops charging the battery. The unit keeps running, and it, and then uh, next morning, you know, the panel kicks back in, charges the battery from the night before because the battery does run down a little bit overnight. And but these ones don't. That's why these batteries don't hold up very well long term because it's not a fault of the batteries, just the, how the thing's built. This particular unit. So this unit might be fine minus the batteries being junk. That might be all that's wrong. So what we can do is we can take. That power supply again that I have hooked up to the batteries a minute ago. And I'm going to set it to uh, about 13 volts. We'll hook it across. Because those solar panels themselves on these Parmax don't go bad all that often. Alright, now I'm going to turn this switch on. Yep, gauge is moving. If it goes to clicking. Hear that? It's working. And the gauge is all the way in the green. So this thing needs new batteries. So how we're going to fix this We'll get them new batteries. I gotta order some in. But we're gonna put a voltage regulator in this uh, system. We'll put the batteries back down inside here. But we're gonna, I don't have the solar a regulator here. I've just ordered some. And I'll be here in about two, three, four days. But um, when we're mount it side of the case right over here on the outside. And we may end up drilling a hole through the case. I don't want to put it inside because that would be a real pain in the neck to um, mount inside here. Because you got all you got the battery, you got the packaging for the hold the battery, you got this housing here that's going to get in the way. So we will mount the regulator on the outside here. And let's drill some holes down the bottom here to run the wires from the regulator, from the panel to the regulator, from the regulator to the battery. And we'll drill something, and then after we put those batteries through, we'll probably plug those holes up. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. Bugs gonna sing any bugs can get in there. There's cobwebs down there anyway. It's a big old spider web. Because in the base of this unit down there in the corner, right down there, there's a hole about as big as your pinky. And uh, that's a drain hole, so water does make its way in there, doesn't just fill the whole thing up. It drains out the bottom bottom there. That's what it's used for. So um yeah. Let's, um, I'm reading this note. So it's been in service for about three or four years. The batteries take a charge, which they don't. With a trickle charger, he probably put a trickle charger on too high of an amp number. These little batteries, like this type of battery pack, you don't want to use like a standard car battery charger, even on two amp charge, uh, which is uh, usually on the lower side of, of uh, the amps on a... Um, on a battery charger, you want to use a one amp or less uh, trickle charger, which you know most of them don't are rated that low. You have to specifically look for a, a battery charger that goes that low. So I imagine what's gone wrong. Even if that battery, if even, even if his trickle charger is less than one amp, it's been cooked so many times with that big old solar panel on there that. Um, it's damaged these batteries internally because I cannot get this one didn't hardly take any load uh, charge at all I put it because it usually within a second or less it tells me real quick if this if the battery is good on based on experience I know what kind of draw it should have and I put seven volts into each six volt battery they're both reading around four volts so it should have a pretty decent amp draw you know maybe an amp give or take draw and as it charged, as it, if it did, I said, okay, these batteries are fine. They need to, they need to charge up for a, a while, and then we'll be good to go. Then we would still probably install a voltage regulator on the thing and be good to go there. But what we can also do is I can take this unit outside. We'll check the solar panel and make sure that it is actually putting out good. And I'll show you then that how much energy, if this panel is good, how much, 
how many volts this panel is putting out, and that's going to tell you why uh, these batteries don't last. Because you can see, the panel goes right to the battery wires directly. Yeah, it goes into the case, but if we test right here, it's going to be putting out 20 plus volts out of this thing, 18 to 20 plus volts out, out of this thing easily. And um, if there's a voltage regulator, we would test here, we get about 15, 14 volts. And I, I, I guarantee if this panel is working fine, um, it's going to be really high voltage reading, um, like, like which is what it's supposed to be based on how this thing is built. But um, yeah, it definitely needs a new battery pack. Okay, let me uh, pause this thing. I'll take you outside with me, come back on, and you'll see what's going on. Okay, we're outside here. The panel's out there facing towards the sun. And I actually had the unit turned on when I walked out here. I could hear a ticking. I was like, what the hell is that ticking? It was a unit. There's no batteries inside there. So why is it clicking? Well, because it's running off the panel. Watch this. It's running off the panel, so we know the panel's fine. Okay, we'll turn it off. Now let's go across. Pause it for a second. Let me get my wire set up because I need a third hand. All right, got one wire plugged in. We're going to touch this other one right here. Get it stay on there. Look at that. 21 volts. That is what's going into the battery. It's way too many volts. That's why the batteries don't hold up very well. There's, there's no voltage regulator on the system. That's why the batteries get cooked and wear out over time because they're you're basically and there's no shut off on the thing. There's no automatic shut off float mode to the thing. So that even though the batteries are all the way charged up, that panel's still shoving 20 something volts into that battery, even though the battery's fully charged. And you know, you can only shove so much crap into a bag till it starts overflowing and has nowhere to go. And eventually, this you know, all hell breaks loose. So then, the that's what cooks those batteries, it gets too many volts for too long and it's cooks some things. So, we will get a regulator for it, we'll get a good one. I'm not going to get the five, you know, the ten dollar one, we're going to get a thirty dollar one. For them, something that's a little bit higher quality that lasts longer, you know, like that. Well, like I said, we'll mount it on the, one of the sides of the case. We'll give him a new battery pack, and hopefully, he'll get like five, six, seven years out of a, out of those batteries. Because then, the one we have will have a, a float mode set up in there. So I, when the batteries get up to like 13 volts, panel the solar or the uh, regular knows. Okay, I can't charge the batteries any higher. It's we're, we're stuck. So it goes. It like basically goes in standby. And doesn't allow the um, uh, solar panel to keep cooking those batteries when it's only totally fully charged up. So that's what we're going to do. So we'll get a panel or a regulator mount on one side of the box, get it all wired in there, get battery packs put in there, and we'll be good to go. So that'll be a part two video coming up. I got to get the regulators here, I got to order batteries and stuff like that. We'll get all that stuff here probably the first part of next week. And then we'll get things squared away. But thanks for checking out our video here. And until next time, see you guys later on. And we'll be good to go.